Hi, welcome to Tuesdays with Rachel. Thank you for joining me this week. Today, I'm going to talk about an activity in Rice Start Math that tends to be a little difficult for some students working through level B, and that is mental math. For those of you who are new to these sessions, my name is Rachel, and I have used Right Start Math with my four children. In addition, I work homeschool conventions and answer emails for Right Start Math. I regularly get emails from moms who are taking their child through level B, and their child is doing great. They're just flying through the lessons, they're grasping everything, and then suddenly they hit this wall, and that wall tends to be mental math. Today, I'm going to give you some tips on how to help your child work through this section of lessons without having your child feeling overwhelmed or frustrated. For those of you who have not used Level B yet and are curious about mental math, Level B teaches students how to add two-digit numbers to two-digit numbers all mentally. Honestly, when I was first looking at Right Start Math, um, I was talking to a, a lady, a salesperson at a convention and she was telling me how her kids were adding two-digit numbers to two-digit numbers in their minds. And I was like, wow, that's great. You must have really smart kids. My kids will never be able to do something like that. But when I worked from all of my kids through level B at one time or another, I was amazed that all of my kids were able to do mental math successfully, even my struggling learners. That being said, not all of my kids were able to do it without any extra work or approaching the process slower. So I'm going to walk together with you through a mental math problem, um, showing you one way to solve a mental math problem as Right Start Math does. Here we have a problem 37 plus 12. Now, for us as an adult, that may not be quite a difficult problem to solve, right? We could probably do that in our minds fairly easily. However, we're talking about a first grade student, maybe a second grade student, or an advanced kindergartner. That is a little tricky. But would you also agree with me that it is easy to add 10 to any number, right? So what if we change that 12 to a 10? 37 plus 10 versus 37 plus 12. Well, that makes it a lot easier to solve, don't you think? And that's how we're going to first approach mental math with our students. 37 plus 10 is what? 47, good, I think I heard somebody say that out there. All right, now are we done with this problem? We are not, because we still have that two up there, right? So we need to add that two back in. So we have 47 plus two, which gives us a total of, somebody say it, <laughs> 49, good. So that takes us through that process, right? 37 plus 12 equals 49. You see how that works? All right, now we're gonna take it a step more difficult, all right? We're gonna take it, we have the problem 37 plus 30. Two. But we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to remove that two temporarily. All right, so we're going to have 37 plus 30. All right, how many tens do we have? We have 310 plus 310, which gives us a total of six tens. And when our children are first learning how to do that, we're going to put that six up there. Now, um, if your child doesn't need to, it all written down, you don't have to write it down. But when my kids were first learning it, I would write the problems down in full so they can see how it works. Then we're adding our ones together. Seven plus zero is how many ones? Seven ones. And we're going to put that on up there as well. Are we done yet? No, we're not, very good. So we have to add that two back in. We now have 67 plus two more, which gives us a total of 69, good, so 37 plus 32 equals 69. Now you're starting to get the flow of it, aren't you? I'm gonna give it, make it even harder, here we go. Ready, here we have 68 plus 68. Let's see how much you guys can do. Again, what's our first step? That's right, we're gonna move our eight. 68 plus 60 is, we're gonna look at our tens. 610 plus 610 gives us a total of 12 tens, I'm gonna plop that up there for now so you guys remember that. And now we're gonna add our ones together. Eight ones plus zero ones gives us how many ones? Eight, and we're gonna put that up there. So 68 plus 60 is 128. Are we done? <laughs> no, we're not. We have to add that eight back in, right? So we have 128 plus eight 
eight ones plus eight ones is 16 ones or right 110 and six ones so we're going to add that 110 to the two and we're left with 136 so now we know 68 plus 68 is 136 good job guys so that's generally how mental math works in right start math that being said for some of my kids that was just a little too fast for them okay so here are some things that i did i'm going to give you some of the things that i did um, to help help my kids learn mental math and i hope you find these ideas helpful the first thing is i wrote the problem on the board the initial problem on the whiteboard with my kids they were so busy either remembering the problem to begin with or remembering the process that they would forget where they were. So by me writing the initial problem on the board, it had, gave them a go-to. It's like, okay, I know where we are now, okay? So th sometimes that helps. Um, when my kids were first learning it, I would also put that secondary problem on the board to kind of keep them tuned in to where they are. And those guys, you know, it's a process. It's a long process of mental math. And so giving them those little helps um, really took the stress off of doing mental math. The other thing is, is when the lesson does say, ask your child, say 68 plus 68, they mean to, they mean to do it verbally. Um, so if your child is able to do it verbally, great. Don't write the problem on the board. But if they need that extra help, put the problem on the board at first. The other thing that I did with my kids is I talked through the process of it. Um, by doing that, I was teaching my child how to think through solving this type of problem and let me tell you show you what i mean so if we're working with 68 plus 68 first off i'm not going to say a word i'm going to write the problem up on the board and just sit and see if my child advances with it if not then i'm going to start giving them some verbal cues and one of my verbal cues was always this wow that problem looks really hard what can we do to make that a little easier and then i'd sit and wait because I want my child to process and think through what it is that they want to do. If my child's still staring at me like a deer in headlights, then I'm going to give them another verbal cue, which is what if we got rid of the eight for now, okay? Starting to get the ball rolling, all right? Then sometimes I needed to write that secondary problem up on the board, 68 plus 60. All right, so this is where we are, 68 plus 60. Again, I am not going to say anything. I'm gonna see if my child is able to take it to the next step. If not, then I'm gonna start asking a question. Maybe we can focus on one place value at a time. Maybe start with the tens first and then the ones. Again, pausing between each one because if once my child starts jumping in on it, I'm gonna let them continue on. I'm not going to give them any more cues, okay? The cues are just to move them to the next step. All right? Once they solve that problem, I'm going to sit. I'm going to see if they remember to add the eight back in. If not, I'm going to ask them the question, are we done yet? Or what do you think we need to do now? To kind of like, oh yeah, I've got to add that eight back in. Okay, so see how I'm kind of giving these verbal cues to help them along, remember where they are in the process and get them focused in on the next step. Again, teaching my child how to think through the process. Now the next step in helping my kids was to start reducing the amount of helps I'm giving my child when they get comfortable. So don't just jump in with the, okay, what do we do now? Remember we do this, remember we do this. Let your child have time to kind of process and think, oh yeah, I need to do this, or oh, I need to add that eight back in. So putting some space in there, some silent space, letting your child chug along and think about how, that's how they're gonna learn. So making sure that you give them the cues when they need it, and then just kind of sitting back and seeing if they remember what comes next. Now, the next thing, um, I hear from parents all the time who, when they're working through level B, and they're working on mental math, and then suddenly mental math education part of it ends, they will continue to practice it, but the, the education of it stops in the middle of level B. Well, parents are, are um, worried that their child can't do mental math right then and there. That's okay. Um, that's just when Right Start Math stops teaching it. It is not the time when your child is expected to master it. All the rest of level B is going to uh, use practice time of it. So in fact, what my kids, 
um, three of my four kids did not know it at the end of the lessons where it was teaching how to do mental math. But every day after that, or almost every day after that, I basically gave them two problems to solve. The first problem I gave them was an easy one, say like 37 plus 32, where there was no carrying, nothing involved. And then I would follow up with the second problem, 68 plus 68, where there's some carrying involved or trading involved. So uh, with the two problems, one just kind of get their mind going, and the second one that makes them think through it a little bit more intense. Um, sometimes the first problem, because it was so easy, I would just do verbally, and the second problem I would put on the board. So allow your child time and realize they have all year to work and learn how to do mental math. So just because they don't know it by the middle of level B doesn't mean that you know everything's a problem. You just keep plugging away, keep plugging away, keep plugging away until they get it. And they'll get it by the end of level B. The last thing I will say, and this is mostly for parents of struggling learners. Um, with mental math, there are several different layers of complexity, okay? There is the layer of remembering all of the pieces. There's the layer of remembering the processes, and then there's the layer of solving the actual little problems. So for example, 68 plus 68, we're adding six plus six. So for our struggling learners, sometimes that's just too many things that they're trying to juggle. So what I did with my struggling learners is, I would give them the abacus not to solve the entire problem at once. I would not have them solve 68 plus 68 on the abacus. I would have them talk through the process, but when it came time for them to do, say, 610 plus 610, I would let them use the abacus to solve those smaller problems. That way, it reduced the amount of stress on my child um, and, and focused them on the process of solving more so than the math fact portion of it. Does that make sense? Okay. I hope that has given you some ideas of how you can make slight adjustments to the mental math process to keep your child learning and engaged while keeping them from feeling frustrated and overwhelmed and stressed. If you have any comments or questions or maybe um, some strategies you used when teaching mental math to your kids, I hope you post them here. We want to hear from you. Um, if you found this video helpful, I hope you click the like button. And if you know somebody who's getting ready to start level B or maybe who is curious about mental math, share this video with them. Join me next week as I talk about how to make multivides that's done in levels D and E a little bit easier for your child. Until then, I hope you have a fabulous week. Bye everybody.